In this video we're going to review the application of the first law of thermodynamics to an isothermal expansion of an ideal gas. Okay, this is going to be our first application of the first law to a practical system, uh, which is going to be illustrative of the power of that law. Okay, this is uh, going to be an expansion of an ideal gas. So the way that we're going to be thinking about this is uh, we're going to have an ideal gas inside a, a container uh, that has a movable piston, right? This can uh, move up and down, and that means that you can do work or apply work on the system. But this is an ideal gas, and uh, you have a number of moles, then you have some temperature, then you have a volume, and then you have a pressure. Okay, that is the physical state. Now we're going to let this expand isothermally. Okay, so the final volume will be larger. Okay, uh, but the key here is that this is isothermal. Uh, the system is also closed, so there's no change in moles. Uh, all right, because there's no change in moles and the system is isothermal, these two variables do not change, but these variables do change, right? You will have a V2, which is larger than V1, and a final pressure uh, that is uh, smaller than the initial pressure. Okay, so that's, that's kind of the setup. Isothermal uh, expansion of an ideal gas. Now, if we apply the first law of thermodynamics, then uh, what we have is this, right? And the question is, well, uh, can we actually uh, have an easy way to compute all of these properties? Now, uh, the value of the change in the internal energy is actually straightforward because we know from the equipartition of energy principle that for an ideal gas, the internal energy, the average internal energy, only depends on temperature. Right, for an ideal gas that happens to be 3 halves kVT, uh, and then for uh, molecular gases, you have to incorporate rotations and vibrations and so forth. But regardless of what, what gas this is, the average internal energy only depends on temperature. If the temperature is not changing uh, in this uh, gas expansion because it's isothermal, that means that there's no change in internal energy. Okay, so then as long as the expansion is isothermal, and this is an ideal gas, then you have that the change in time energy is zero. That means that the other two properties are straightforward to calculate, right? You have that heat is equal to minus work, and then work is going to depend on how you carry out this expansion. Okay, so suppose that we're doing this against a constant external pressure of one atmosphere. And again, we can change this uh, whichever way we one, this could be a reversible process, or it could be a different external pressure, but in this case, it's going to be a constant external pressure of one atmosphere. So then the calculation is uh, straightforward, right? We know that uh, the way you calculate work in a gas expansion is just the integral of uh, the external differential of V from V1 to V2. Okay, but if the uh, pressure is uh, constant, then this is simply minus P external delta V. All right, so we just need to know what the change in volume is, and for this particular problem, we can have kind of the following variables. The number of moles will be, uh, actually it really doesn't matter what it is, but uh, we're gonna maybe make it uh, be two moles. Temperature is 298 Kelvin. And then we're gonna have a V1 of 10 liters. And then uh, uh, the final volume is going to be 20 liters. Okay. And again, the, the external pressure is just 1 atm. Okay. From these uh, values, then we can calculate what the work is uh, in a straightforward manner. This is going to be minus 1 atm, which in Pascal is 101.325 uh, Pascal. And then uh, change in volume, which I'm going to use here SA units, cubic meters. So that will be uh, 20, 10 to the minus 3 cubic meters, minus 10. Let's actually use all of the sig figs. So that is uh, minus 10, 10 to the minus 3 cubic meters. Okay, to find that the work is equal to minus 1.01, 10 to the 3 joules. Okay, so about 1 kilojoule of work. Now heat is going to be the same number with the different signs, so plus 1.01, 10 to the 3 joules, about 1 kilojoule, and again, delta U is equal to zero. Okay, so essentially what's happening here in this uh, expansion is that you're able to extract work from the system. 
Okay, as a matter of fact, in going from uh, uh, the initial state to the final state, you're actually uh, exercising one kilojoule of work. You're transferring that from the system in the surroundings. However, what happens is that uh, while the system is doing work on the surroundings, right, uh, that energy that is disposed of as work must have entered the system as heat. Right? So again, you are uh, depositing energy into the surroundings as work, but the same amount of, amount of energy enters the system as heat. Okay, that's how you explain this isothermal expansion as an, uh, of an ideal gas. This ultimately tells you that you can do uh, a work out of nothing, right? So, so again, the, this, this, you, you simply can't gain the system. You can't do work out of nothing. It's going to cost you something. And, and this very simple isothermal ideal like gas expansion kind of exemplifies how this uh, conservation of energy applies uh, in a real system. Now in the next video we're going to continue to seek applications of the first law of thermodynamics and we're going to look at what happens when you're working at constant volume.